Hey friends, welcome to this week's nursery tour here at Creekside Nursery in Dallas, North Carolina. If you recall, we do these nursery tours to give you sweet folks an idea, a real-time glimpse of what is growing, blooming, and thriving here at the nursery. Here we find ourselves, middle of July, the heat has hit. Praise the Lord, we have a cloudy day this morning, so we are out here. Um, and we're going to showcase some gorgeous shrubs that are absolutely thriving right now. Um, we always encourage you to visit your local garden center throughout the year. That way you see what is really thriving during that season um, so that you can add that into your garden. If you are in the south, heck, if you're just about anywhere in the country right now, I am sure that you are experiencing the heat of summer. It is July. So a lot of times um, we find ourselves that, you know, of course your spring plants, whether it's your annuals or your perennials or your shrubs, right? So the heat has hit and they're kind of like, ugh, it's hot, I'm done. Well, so we want to show you today are some shrubs that are absolutely loving life because different plants thrive in different conditions. And there are some that absolutely, absolutely explode in the heat of the summer. We're going to showcase you a lot of beautiful hydrangeas and hibiscus and roses of Sharon and roses and all sorts of fun things. Because if you remember just our last video when we went to go visit Jamie and Maria's gardens, right? So they are in basically like the middle of South Carolina, really, really hot but their garden is absolutely glorious right now because they have planted those plants that love the heat of the summer. So that is what we are going to showcase you today with these beautiful shrubs. So let's get started here with um, hydrangeas because it is especially your panicle hydrangeas. We are in the season for that. Absolutely. So Throughout here, um, <laughs> you can see that we have quite a variety of panicle hydrangeas. So panicle hydrangeas, what we do love about them so much is that they are sun loving. So typically they are gonna be sun to part sun. That means they need a minimum of five hours of direct sun. They also bloom on new growth. That means you are guaranteed flowers every single year. And I'm trying to figure out, let's see. Okay, here we go. Little lime punches, that's what I thought these were. So little lime punches are one of the newest uh, members of that kind of that limelight little lime family. I adore this hydrangea because it gets to be between three to five feet. Keep in mind, if you're in the south, we tend to be on the higher end of those measurements, but they have really strong, stocky stems and just absolutely gorgeous flowers. So where we love little lime, little lime punch is gonna be even more um, improved, shall we say. I have found that their stems are super strong. They do the beautiful creamy white, kind of that limey green um, flower. And if you're in a cooler climate where your nights turn cool, then they will, will turn a beautiful red. For us, we just get to have uh, <laughs> gorgeous, creamy, iridescent flowers. Firelights. Firelights are not new on the market whatsoever. Here we have some, um, and that I will say that firelights for me are the ones that will most reliably kind of turn, have that pink hue to them. Obviously, when you have shrubs that are in containers, you're restraining their growth, right? So a lot of times when you have it in a container, it is not as big and as lush, obviously, as it will be in the ground. Fire lights will be on the big side, so they're comparable to your quick fires or your lime lights in that six to eight foot kind of range as far as your height. Nice big open flowers on them. So this is what we would call like a lace cap type panicle. So if you see how open these are, right? So you can have within a panicle, you can have a lace cap and you can have a mop head. So it's very open. Um, so when it rains, the water will just go through it and it doesn't get super heavy. Pollinators love this hydrangea. We have them up on Hydrangea Hill near the chicken coop. They are covered in pollinators. And I'm finding that they have a really nice, light, uh, delicious fragrance to them. A very kind of a sweet, subtle fragrance. Love, love, love firelights. All right, let's see. Let's come over 
on this side over here um, because we have got some puffer fish that are just spectacular and really are kind of uh, coming into their own right here. So puffer fish, this is new on the market this year from our friends at Proven Winners and they too will have more of that kind of that open um, habit on their blooms so that the water can pass through them. So your puffer fish will have nice, big, beautiful blooms. And then I'm not sure if this is where we're starting to have the little tuft that will come out. It'll have a little, little sprig that comes out above it. Typically your panicles are going to be hardy in zones roughly three to eight. Your puffer fish is going to be three feet tall, three to five feet tall and wide. I have mine in full sun. Like look at this bloom. Look how big this thing is. And this is not even a full size bloom here in the container. Um, but pufferfish too um, seems to have nice strong stems. It's like the more breeding that they do with these hydrangeas, the stronger the stems are. The stronger the stems, the bigger the flowers um, and just absolutely gorgeous color. Now this, my friends, is a beautiful hydrangea. This is another panicle hydrangea. This is from our friends at Southern Living. This is White Wedding. And White Wedding, you can see like we've had rain a little bit this morning and of course then the irrigation has, um, has been on. These blooms are full of water. Like they, they, have, they have water in them, but look how nice and strong and sturdy these stems are. I planted a white wedding in the strip of the shade garden at our house um, because it caught my attention. Southern Living was saying that this is one of the most shade tolerant panicle hydrangeas. And in that spot where I planted mine, it is in the shade garden. Um, it gets a little bit of morning sun. Well, probably about four hours of morning sun and then some late afternoon sun. Mine is in full bloom and is absolutely beautiful. So the specs on the white wedding are that it is going to be four to six feet tall, three to five wide. Um, so it's definitely going to be more of an upright and it is um, going to be hardy in zones three to nine. So my folks who say, well, I'm in zone nine, is there a hydrangea for me in zone nine? Try White Wedding. Absolutely a beautiful, beautiful panicle hydrangea. I love the fact that I'm guaranteed blooms every single year because my White Wedding replaced a macrophylla hydrangea where I was not getting flowers because of those crazy light, you know, frosts that we get. So this is definitely an option for you as well. While we're standing here, it is hibiscus season in the South. Absolutely. So these are our perennial hibiscus meaning where we typically have always thought about like hibiscus people will have them by the pool and so forth those are annuals those are tropical hibiscus these are perennials these are from our friends at proven winners and walters gardens the series the name of their hibiscus is summerific so you will have the summerific hibiscus and then you have all these different cultivars within that family this is the berry awesome which is obviously you can see is a beautiful kind it is a pink but it is a different shade of a pink um, this will be 48 inches 48 inches <laughs> yeah 48 inches that's right not 48 feet 48 inches tall four feet tall um, and they are cold hardy in zones four to nine so my folks who you know, are our people right here in zone seven. They're like, you know, can they survive our own winters? Oh my gosh, yes they can. Not a problem at all. These are perennials. So that means in the winter time, they're gonna die completely to the ground. You're, it's not a shrub. You're not gonna have sticks in the winter time. Dies completely to the ground. And then in the spring, when the heat hits, they explode and jump in color. Um, and so they will be, um, as long as they get good water, they will be continuous bloomers. So they are technically bog plants. So if you put them in a wet area or somewhere where they're gonna get consistent moisture, they're gonna grow faster and they're gonna bloom for a very long time. Ours up in the Easy Scape Garden, um, it was blooming through October. So basically, I mean, you cannot beat blooming from like 
beginning of July till October. So very awesome. New this year is the Lilac Crush. And Lilac Crush is, oh look, we got a little bumblebee. It was hiding in there. Um, Lilac Crush is a beautiful lavender color with a really nice dark hot pink eye to it. It's interesting because I have three of these in the, um, the backyard off of the patio. And as the day goes, sometimes they'll take on almost like a bluish hue to them. So really, really prolific bloomers. And the crushes, so this like uh, Lilac Crush, Valentine's Crush, that means they're gonna be upright. So you basically have two different kinds of shapes of your hibiscus. So you have the columnar, which is gonna be taller than it is wide, or what they call the gumdrop. And the gumdrop is gonna be wider than it is tall. So an example of a gumdrop would be the Holy Grail. So here we have Holy Grail that has near black foliage, right? But then look at this beautiful, I mean, gorgeous red bloom on it. It is a gorgeous contrast between the plant as far as the flower and the foliage. But this is going to be wider than it is tall. We planted these at our church and we were just there yesterday and they were loaded in flowers. Absolutely gorgeous. So there's Holy Grail. Then we have Spinderella. So here is Spinderella, which is a really fun um, white and soft pink kind of a pinwheel and you can notice that the petals are overlapping each other so you have beautiful coverage here so this is spinderella then we have on this side um that's still a spinderella let's see who is this is that evening rose no that's not evening awesome. very awesome so jerry says that's very awesome then we have edge of night Edge of Night is another really near black foliage, but it will have like iridescent pink blooms on it. Um, and you can see that they're, you know, I don't, they're blooming at different times um, because this one doesn't have, it has tons of buds, but it hasn't started blooming yet. So the conditions for your, um, your hibiscus are going to be anywhere from full hot sun um, to some part sun. So I would definitely say you need a minimum of five to six hours or more. If you can give them as much water as you possibly can, that will be great because they will just grow bigger. Um, yeah. And then the only kind of maintenance as far as like what you have to do is at the end of the season, once they have completely, the freeze has gotten them, you're going to cut them to the ground and there you go. This is Valentine's Crush. That's a new one too, um, as opposed to the Lilac Crush. So this will be upright, beautiful green foliage with that really bright, bright red. Um, so there you go. This one will be a little bit bigger. This is going to be 60 inches tall. So it is going to be a good five feet, lots of good height to it. Um, just really nice. Now, what else is blooming and thriving right now are uh, the roses. So the roses have kind of hit their second flush. Of course, the roses are gorgeous in the um, springtime. Here we have Italian ice, oh so easy, Italian ice. It got its first flush, um, and then I believe, did we trim these back? I don't know if we trimmed these back or not. If we did, maybe it was just a little bit, but not a ton, and um, they smell really good. Like there is a really nice fragrance to them. I'm trying to find, here's a tag. Um, so the Oso It's Easy Italian Ice is going to be hardy in zones four to nine, one and a half to two and a half feet tall and wide. Of course, your roses do love the full sun and they just have that beautiful like color variation on them. So they have creams, they have pinks, they have a peach, um, lots of beautiful colors on them and just a really nice, great rose to add to the garden if you don't want a ton of height. So this, depending on how your garden is, could be in the middle or the front of your flower bed. Um, another one that is doing really well right now is the um, the drift rose. So this is popcorn. And so popcorn, um, I think you can see here why it has um, its name because it looks like popcorn, right? So your newer blooms are a nice, soft, buttery yellow. And then as they age, they will go to a beautiful, nice, creamy, creamy white color. 
The, um, the popcorn also has a beautiful, delicious fragrance to it. It is going to be, let me get my zones here, zones four to 11. So my hot weather people, if you need a good one, then this will be it. It's definitely gonna be full sun, one and a half feet tall by two feet wide. Um, you're gonna place them about two to three feet apart. Roses, of course, do really well when they get good, consistent water. Um, so that just way it helps them give those gorgeous blooms all season long. Another great hot weather shrub that is doing really well are the Roses of Sharon. So here we have a little collection of the, uh, the chiffon series that we are growing. So this is the dark lavender chiffon. Isn't that fun? That is a beautiful color. I mean, just, it is not pink and it's not blue. It really is a really nice lavender color because as Jerry goes through, then you will see that blue chiffon um, and the chiffons are fun because they basically are a double flower they have that nice frilly center they tend to be less um, produce less seeds i'm not going to say that they're completely sterile but they are definitely do not produce anywhere in the number of seeds where you may get some other roses of sharon Different parts of the country, um, Roses of Sharon can be invasive, so just know your area. That's where being a student of your own garden is highly important. For us, um, obviously, since we sell them, it is not an issue here for us to have to worry about them um, being any kind of invasive plant whatsoever. But the Roses of Sharon are gonna be really nice and upright, and they get some height to them. So if you remember our back patio, we have a white and we have a blue chiffon as far as the standard, and they can get really nice size. They can get eight to 12 feet tall, uh, six to 10 feet wide. So they can get big, they bloom on new growth. So that's great because you can keep them shaped to kind of whatever size that you want. They are gonna be hardy in zones five to nine. Um, and this is definitely gonna be their season where they are exploding in color um, because they are hot weather loving plants. We're looking for some evergreen shrubs. You've got abelias. Abelias are a wonderful Southern shrub Nice, low growing. This is Radiant. So we have Radiance here and then we have Kaleidoscope next, no, Trace Amigos right next door. Um, and so the Abelias are gonna be a Southern shrub. They're gonna be more of a mounded shrub. So we've got, well, we do, we've got Radiance. And then I think Jerry's showing you Kaleidoscope right here. And then those are both were uh, born and bred in North Carolina. And then we have Trace Amigos from Proven Winners that is relatively new on the market this year, I believe. Yes, so abelias will tend to be more mounded. So they are great, it depends on your bed, in the front or the middle of your bed. And you can see like Radiance, especially right now, is starting to bloom. So they will do nice, small, little kind of bell-shaped flowers that your pollinators love. So all your abelias are going to bloom and nice, sweet fragrance to them. Um, again, nice attractor for your pollinators and do, they just, yeah, they do great. Uh, Laura Petalums are rocking right now. So Laura Petalums, another Southern shrub, and they will come in all sizes. So you can get a Purple Daydream right here. Purple Daydreams are gonna be nice and compact. They are one of the smallest of, on the markets. So they're gonna be a nice little evergreen shrub. It's also called a Chinese fringe flower because they do these beautiful little um, pink flowers in the late winter, early spring. This one's just has a, I don't know why it's blooming, but it just has a couple little blooms on it but they're going to be nice and mounted now they're just putting on new growth as jerry says now come over here because look at this beautiful plant is that not a fun like let me just pull this out for you so that you can see what that shrub looks like gorgeous now obviously this laura pedalum is variegated this is going to be the jazz hands variegated from proven winners um so we just fertilize things Yes. And that's one of the keys to get the variegated, really bright color. Okay, so Jerry's not mic'd up, so I'll repeat that in case you didn't hear that. Um, 
he said we have just gone through and done an application of fertilizer and that is key in getting that beautiful variegated color because the variegation shows up on new growth correct and so by fertilizing you're encouraging that new growth um, and you can see that your new growth has that pink that cream that green speckles in there nice thick your older foliage will be a little bit more green on the inside but just a lovely lovely shape to it so for sure love this plant like it is it is looking primo right now it is rocking for sure uh let's see oh some other roses of sharon because i may have scared you <laughs> when i told you how big the um, chiffons get in that 8 to 12 foot mark um, so this is little kim and we have little kim red and then little kim in the back so if you see little kim so little kim red right here has these now i technically wouldn't call this red i would call this more mauve but you know i digress so little kim red and little kim still hardy in zones five to nine but they're only three to four feet tall and wide so a much more manageable size so if you're like i do not have room for some giant rose of sharon okay well then try the little kims because they're still going to be in that full sun a beautiful petite shrub that is long blooming um, and it's just going to be really fun you could even put this into a pot so if you wanted to, um, if you had a container and you needed to pop a color somewhere, then feel free to put one of these in a container because it would do really, really well. I want to show you highlight really quickly. Um, it is not currently blooming. Um, it is about to begin blooming. The temple is a temple of bloom. So this is a seven sun flower. Let me move this abelia out of the way so I can get in here. Um, so if you remember, I planted one of these up at the chicken coop. And so the Temple of Bloom, if you're familiar with crepe myrtles, kind of that shape of a tree, that's what this reminds me of. Um, you could keep it as a shrub if you wanted to, but it's meant to be kind of a multi-trunk, small tree. You can see that it is a, about to pop out in some flowers. They will do beautiful kind of a, um, a creamy white flower that your butterflies are massively attracted to. We have seen this as a mature tree in the trial gardens at Spring Meadow Nursery, and it is a gorgeous, gorgeous tree. So let me tell you about Temple of Bloom because it really is not talked about a lot. It is not one of those out there really popular, but you really need to think about adding it to your garden, especially if you have kind of a small garden. So these are gonna be hardy in zones five to nine. They're gonna be sun to part shade, and they're, and I say only six to 10 feet tall and wide because it's a tree, right? That's a relatively small, a small tree. Um, so it's a small specimen tree, beautiful foliage, fragrant flowers, um, and then it has a peeling bark that's really neat and then it has great fall color so this is a really really fun tree shrub that you might want to consider adding to your garden um, as it grows you will keep it kind of limbed up so you're going to have to um, do a little bit of pruning as the plant grows i'm sure there are probably bigger size temple of blooms out there these are size these are a three gallons um i've never seen one in like a 15 gallon size uh, we've had seven one time yeah we did have seven one time um but if you're waiting for like a 15 gallon yeah. it might be kind of hard to find so but this is what's fun about gardening right is that you get to watch it grow and develop so the temple of blooms um are definitely a great choice now um Coming on down here because I want to highlight these for you. Oh my gosh, y'all. Okay, this is Vanilla Spice. And Vanilla Spice is a wonderful native shrub that is really starting to hit her stride right now. So this is a summer sweet. So that's the type of plant. Let me clean off the tag. It is a summer sweet for you. Um, and I think you can probably tell why because in the summertime is when it blooms these nice bottle brush flowers on it that smell delicious it has the best fragrance to it hardy in zones four to nine 
They're going to be three to six feet tall by three to five wide. Now, they do bloom on new growth, so that means that you can absolutely shape them in late winter going into spring. So if you want to keep it on that three foot side, you absolutely can. It's going to be sun to part shade. It is a native plant, fragrant, those beautiful large flowers. And then in the fall, <laughs> y'all, I wish we had a picture. I don't have a picture, but we had these on the shrub lot, the production shrub lot last year. Um, I mean, we have them every year, right? But coming through in the fall and I was like, what is that plant? Because of course we have them in blocks, right? This gets the most brilliant yellow foliage in the fall. It is stunning. It is gorgeous. So not only do you have a native plant that produces fragrant white flowers that the pollinators go nuts over. The only reason that they're not out here right now is because it's a cloudy, rainy morning and they're still in the bed. But then in the fall, you get that beautiful yellow foliage. Oh my goodness you need to get out here and get this plant for sure um i was trying to think um oh ideal for rain gardens so if you have that wet area there you go this is a great one for sure yes you will see these in our signature garden <laughs> absolutely for sure um yeah so whether you're looking for brandywine viburnum i know we've talked about this a couple of weeks ago in a nursery tour Brandy wine, brandy wine viburnums. Um, they are a deciduous shrub, but I want to bring you back over here because when we showed these to you last time, I think they had just finished blooming. Do you see those little berries? So they're green right now, but they are going to develop and they are going to first, I can't remember if they're pink first or they're blue first, but they're purple and pink and they will be covering this plant. So the brandy wine viburnum, let me let me grab a tag here for you. We have these in our garden up along the, um, the wood line up at the house. Um, here's a picture of the berries for you. The birds love them. So if you are looking to support your, um, your songbird population, then this is a great one. Hardy in zones of five to nine, five to six feet tall and wide. I've never pruned mine. I just let it go. Like it just is, like I said, on that wood line where it can just grow and develop. It um, is a native plant. It has beautiful fall, that fall fruit and that fall color. Sun to part shade. Um, like I said, it does the flowers in the spring. Then you get those sweet little berries on it. Beautiful plant. It is one of those that is, I, in my opinion, is very underused and it's underrated, but this is a great plant to use as a backdrop in your garden. I feel like my hair's gotten bigger throughout this whole video because of the humidity. Maybe I'm wrong, Jerry's kind of looking at me like I'm crazy, but it just feels like, ladies, you know, the poof. Like you feel like your hair just like grows. That's where I am currently. All right, oh, oh, one more thing. Pearl Glam. Talking about fun, beautiful uh, <laughs> uh, berries and things that are highlighting right now in the heat of the summer. Pearl Glam, Beauty Berry. So this is very kind of similar in the same of that brandy wine as far as you get on the stem, okay? So it starts at the bottom and it goes up. So currently at the top, we have more of those little small white flowers. Down here where we have the old blooms, it's hard to tell, but they're tiny. They're these little teeny tiny little balls and they're gonna grow and they're gonna develop and it's gonna continue through up the whole plant. And then this fall, those little berries are gonna be the most beautiful iridescent purple and the whole stems are gonna be covered in this iridescent purple berries. That is why it's called a beauty berry bush because they are gorgeous. Blooms on new growth, um, a wonderful fall interest plant. Um, we do have some honeybees over here because this time of year when you have those flowers, they are massive pollinator attractors, but even the foliage has kind of a, a purpley hue to it. Like it's a nice green with like purple veining in it is a great option. So they're going to be hardy in zones um, five to eight and they're going to be four to five feet tall and wide. They do bloom on new growth so you can prune them in late winter. Okay I'm going to stop now because you know me I could just keep on going um, talking about beautiful 
plants that are loving the heat like sunshine ligustrums, right? Jamie and Maria's yard, they use these a lot because they have that full hot sun and they are a beautiful complement to these darker um, shrubs, whether it's hydrangeas or hibiscus. Don't forget about foliage, maybe not flowers. Yeah, a lot of people get this one confused because, you know, I think ligustrum, most ligustrums take a lot of water. This one doesn't like a lot. Of it does water. not like a lot of water. So if folks will say, um, especially. Yes, it, obviously it needs water. All plants need water. Um, but if you're coming out of winter and going into spring, some people will say my sunshine ligustrums have just like, it seems like they've dropped all of their leaves. That is because we, you probably had a massive amount of water from rain, right? Especially here in the south because our winters can be historically wet um, and they do not like wet feet. Yes, they have to have water, but they are not like a hibiscus or um, the vanilla spice that love to sit in kind of wet, wet areas, they do not. Um, so if your sunshine ligustrums do that in late winter and they drop their leaves, the best thing you can do is that's a great time to prune them and then fertilize them and then they will flush back out. But three by four. Three by four. Yes, absolutely. And you can whack on these things as much as you need to. I mean, it's, it's really hard to, <laughs> to mess these things up. Okay. So whether you are in North Carolina and you're going to come visit us uh, Wednesday through Saturday, 9 to 3, or you are somewhere else in the country, go visit your local garden center. Really and truly, visit your local garden center throughout the year because that way you can see what is handling the heat of the summer, what is looking gorgeous in the dead of winter, right? So you've got to go visit and see different plants throughout the year because that way you can plant your garden to have interest for 12 months out of the year. All right. As always, we hope you have found this fun, informative, and inspirational. And I forgot one thing. Do not forget this. Even Jerry was rolling his eyes because he forgot it too. So, come on. He was like, oh no, we almost forgot. We've got a special. Like, kind of a, I don't know if you want to call it end of summer, whatever you want to call it. Aquapots. Now, if you were in the south, or anywhere where it's hot, or anywhere that has water restrictions, you need an aquapot in your life because aquapots are the self-watering containers from proven winners. You will notice that I think all of these aquapots are turned upside down because aquapots hold water. So let's let's flip one over. So this is this color is peacock. So this is the um, it's not. Is it quilted? Is, that, is this considered quilted? Okay, so come on over here. So it has a little, it was just cardboard. It's not the pot. Real life here, people. All right, aqua pots are these gorgeous cera glazed ceramic pottery, high quality um, that are self-watering containers. So you will notice in the bottom, there is no drain hole, right? So the bottom is solid. That's because you will have water basically up to this rim right here. In the back, right here, of every aqua pot, there will be, it's really hard to see, a little teeny tiny hole. And this is your overflow hole. This allows the pot not to be overfilled with water. So it is impossible for you to have too much water in your aqua pot. This is the inner workings of it. So you have these, what we call the, um, like the soil tube that adjusts, and then this sits right here on top. So the soil disc sits on top, and then you have got soil all through here. You push your soil down into this tube. And so because this tube has slits, and so you've got water on here, and then the soil up in here. And so it wicks the water up. So then you plant your aqua pot the same as you would any other pot. That's not the right tube, but that's all right. You get the idea. So this is the water tube. So it'll be sitting here. And so you can take your hose and fill it up once a week. So like I said, if you have an area, if you live in an area where like us in North Carolina, where you've planted a container in the spring, 
and at this time in the season, you're having to water it at least once a day, maybe even twice a day, or maybe you're like in California. I know California, some parts will have a lot of water restrictions. Um, if you're out in the desert, wherever you may be that is hot and dry, these are wonderful because they make the most efficient use of the water. It is not wasteful and they are beautiful containers. So they come in a whole range of colors. The pots that are upright, these are just traditional containers, but if you see them where they are upside down, then those are aqua pots. So what we're gonna be doing here at Creekside uh, is all aqua pots are 25% off. So for the next uh, month, end of July, to the end of July, all aqua pots are 25% off. So you can come, you can, uh, <laughs> load up your car with aqua pots and um, we have used them for um, ever since they came out which was probably 2019 29 i was gonna say 20, four years 2020 yes february. it was 19 it was february february of 19. yes because we were with jack 2020. 2020. when they actually came out yeah. okay anyway 19 20 whatever we were at the garden show though with jack in 19 because that was pre-COVID, but they came out. The next year we went there twice. Yes, I know. Anyway, Jerry and I were having a discussion. Whether it doesn't matter, three or four years, you get to see a little marital conversation here. Um, it does not matter. We have used them ever since they came out and we have thoroughly enjoyed them. Our plants love them. Um, our, <laughs> I love them as a gardener because I only have to fill them up once a week um, and they perform great um, so you can no matter what your color palette is if you want to go with classic white if you want to go with the um, the matte black whether it's a it's a smooth finish we have the smooth finish over here or something with texture there's all sorts of ones there are big nice big ones and you have smaller ones so does not matter what the size is or what the design is, they are all 25% off. So come get an aqua pot if you have been thinking about it. Now, here is your sign to come get one at Creekside. All right, now we're done. All right, y'all have a great day. Uh, we're gonna take advantage of this cloud coverage and uh, get some projects done where we're not dying of heat exhaustion. As always, thanks so much for going with Creekside. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.